Hello everyone, I'm Takashi from NTT. Today I will talk about the black box approach to post quantum zero knowledge in constant rounds. This is a joint work with Ai Hui Chia and Kai Ming Chan. Zero knowledge proofs and arguments are fundamental primitive in cryptography. In those primitives, a prover tries to convince a verifier of truth of some statement or without revealing anything beyond the truth of the statement itself. Formally, we require the following three properties. The first is completeness, which means that if the statement is true and everything is done correctly, then verifier accepts with overwhelming probability. Second is the soundness, uh, which means that the statement is false, uh, then the verifier accepts uh, with negligible probability. And especially uh, when we consider unbounded time cheating prover, uh, then we call the protocol proofs. And if we consider a, a polynomial time as a box, then that is called arguments. And the third property is the zero knowledge property, uh, which means that verifier learns nothing beyond uh, the fact that uh, the statement is a true statement. And uh, next, I will explain a more formal definition of the zero knowledge property. So, the zero knowledge property is defined like this uh, for any verifier, there exists. A simulator. They exist uh, for any distinguisher such that distinguisher doesn't distinguish uh, these two worlds. The real world in the real world, verifier interacts with the honest prover, and in the ideal world, simulator simulates uh, the verifier's view. And especially when we consider classical the knowledge, everything VSD and OGS uh, is classical, and when we consider uh, quantum zero knowledge, everything is quantum. And especially, we consider the subclass of zero knowledge called black box zero knowledge. The difference from the normal zero knowledge is that the simulator here uh, uses the verifier only in a black box manner. And here are several reasons why we study black box zero knowledge. Uh, first, uh, most known protocols satisfy black box zero knowledge. Second, there are very few non-black box simulation techniques. And the third, uh, protocols with non-black box zero knowledge are usually far from practical. Uh, so, for, for those reasons, uh, it is very important to study uh, the power and the limitations of black box zero knowledge. And especially, uh, what we consider in this work is post-quantum zero knowledge. Uh, post-quantum zero knowledge protocol is a classical protocol uh, with quantum zero knowledge. And especially we focus on those for NP languages. And uh, because we already know a lot of constructions of classical zero knowledge protocols for NP, so one may think that uh, we can obtain post-quantum zero knowledge by just replacing the assumptions with post-quantum assumptions in those classical constructions. However, uh, in general, this doesn't work. Uh, because of the usage of rewinding technique uh, that is often used in the classical uh, security proofs. And uh, I'd like to review known constructions of classical and post-quantum zero knowledge protocols. And I remark that this is not an exhaustive list of the known constructions, and this is just uh, re related, most related work for our work. The first and, oh, sorry. First, the knowledge proof for NP languages was uh, proposed by uh, Goldwright, Himika, and Rydasen, and this is based on one-way function. However, the round complexity of this protocol is polynomial. So after that, uh, it is one of the most important research topics in the knowledge to reduce uh, the number of uh, rounds. And uh, as a constant rounds, uh, there were uh, protocols by Goldwright, Hikahan, and uh, Bedare, Jacobson, Yen, and this is five round based on collision relation to hash, and this is four round based on one function, and this is only argument. So this is the state of art uh, in the classical setting. However, uh, it, it, it is not immediately clear if these constructions uh, uh, also, also satisfy quantum zero knowledge, uh, even if we use post quantum assumption. For that direction, the first progress was, was made by Watras in 2005. So he proved that uh, many known constructions of classical zero knowledge protocol 
actually also satisfy uh, quantum zero knowledge if we use quantum assumptions, post quantum assumptions. And as a result, he obtained zero uh, knowledge quantum post quantum zero knowledge proof uh, for based on post quantum warming function. However, his technique is only applicable to protocol with polynomial number of rounds. So after that, it has it has been a long standing open problem to construct constant round post quantum zero knowledge proofs or even arguments. This open problem was recently solved by Bitansky and Shumili. Uh, they constructed constant round post quantum zero knowledge argument. However, there were several uh, caveat uh, in their construction. First, uh, their construction is argument, and so it only satisfies computation of soundness. Second, uh, their, they rely on some novel non black box simulation technique, uh, which means that their protocol is not black box zero knowledge. Third, uh, their assumption is rather strong. Uh, their, uh, the quantum hardness of LWE and the existence of uh, quantum fully homomorphic encryption. Therefore, uh, we ask the following question in this work. Uh, there are constant round post quantum black box zero knowledge protocols, uh, hopefully with statistical soundness from weak assumptions. And this is our results. Uh, we construct post quantum black box zero knowledge proofs and arguments uh, from weaker assumptions at the cost of weakening zero knowledge to what is called epsilon zero knowledge, uh, which I will explain later. And uh, especially, we construct two protocols. The first is proofs from collapsing hash function, uh, which is a quantum counterpart of collision resistant hash function introduced by UNRU. And the second is argument from one wave function. And uh, here I would like to remark that our follow-up follow work showed the impossibility of constant round post quantum black box zero knowledge for NP and the reasonable assumption. Therefore, uh, weakening zero knowledge property is unavoidable for obtaining black box zero knowledge in constant round, so this follow-up work uh, justifies uh, the weakening of zero knowledge to epsilon zero knowledge. So this is a comparison table among known constructions and our constructions. So as I said, the collapsing hash function is the quantum counterpart of collision resistant hash function. So given this similarity, our first construction is very similar to uh, what is achieved by gold rahe protocol. And actually, uh, our first construction is almost the same construction as the gold rahe construction except that we use uh, post-quantum building blocks. So now I would like to explain what is epsilon zero knowledge, uh, but before that, uh, I let me re recall the definition of the standard zero knowledge property. So the black book zero knowledge property uh, says that the difference between these two probabilities uh, is upper bounded by negligible function. By the definition of negligible function, uh, this is uh, equivalent to this. Uh, for any inverse polynomial epsilon, uh, this is upper bounded by epsilon. And the epsilon zero knowledge is obtained by uh, slightly changing uh, the order of quantifiers. Uh, that is, uh, epsilon comes before s. Uh, this means that the simulator can uh, depend on on the epsilon, and so this uh, weakens the requirement. However, uh, we like to claim that epsilon zero knowledge is just below the standard zero knowledge in the hierarchy of variants of zero knowledge properties uh, for the following re reasons. Uh, first, uh, epsilon zero knowledge implies weaker notions of zero knowledge such as witness indistinguishability, witness hiding, and so on. And the second, epsilon zero knowledge is sufficient for many game-based security applications. And third, achieving epsilon zero knowledge is usually as hard as achieving zero knowledge in the classical setting. And for those reasons, uh, we believe that epsilon zero knowledge is very mild relaxation of the zero knowledge property. 
So from now, I would like to uh, move on to the technical part. And uh, though we propo pro propose two constructions, but in this talk, I focus on the first construction. And our first, first construction is almost the same as the gold right hikaham construction, as I mentioned. And that construction is based on Sigma protocol. So let's start from Sigma protocol. So Sigma protocol is a three round interactive protocol uh, that satisfies the following three properties. The first two are just standard completeness and hardness. And the third property is called special honest verifier zero knowledge. Uh, so this means that for any fixed E, uh, the transcript can be simulated by a simulator uh, given E. So remark that this is different from the general, the standard zero knowledge, because when we consider a general malicious verifier, the verifier can choose E depending on A, so we cannot fix E at first. So this means that if we know verifier sends some particular E in advance, then we can simulate the transcript. And the goal right here, Kahan protocol is, is based on the Sigma protocol, and they added some additional commitment by verifier uh, to make uh, the protocol uh, their knowledge against general verifier. So the idea is to let the verifier uh, commit to the, 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 the E at the beginning. And then a simulator can first rewind the verifier to extract E, and after that E is already committed so simulator can use that extracted E to simulate the transcript of the Sigma protocol part, and then it can accomplish the task of simulation. However, uh, the problem is that in, if verifier is quantum, uh, then this rewinding doesn't work because when the simulator rewinds the verifier, verifier's internal state may collapse, and so verifier may not may not go back to the original state. So this is a problem in the quantum setting. And uh, in spite of this difficulty, uh, we managed to prove that uh, this protocol uh, is uh, quantum epsilon zero knowledge by using a novel uh, proof technique. Uh, Toward uh, quantum simulation, uh, we first make the following observation. Uh, suppose that the following two assumptions hold. First, uh, ER is information theoretically determined from the commitment, and second, uh, V never aborts. Uh, then uh, we can rewind V without collapsing its internal state. The reason is that if these assumptions hold, then ER sent in this round is uh, already determined in advance, and such a deterministic quantum computation can be done uh, without collapsing the state in general. And so, uh, in this case, uh, we can rewind the fire uh, without collapsing its internal state. And this was already observed in Bitansky and Shimmery work. And uh, for the item one, uh, this can be achieved by just requiring a uh, commitment to be strict binding. Uh, for the definition, is exactly the item one. And uh, this requirement can be relaxed to what is called strong collapse binding. Uh, which can be seen as a computational version of strict binding. And we know that such a commitment can be constructed based on collapsing hash function. And this is the only assumption we use. And uh, a collapse, uh, so the details about the definition of collapse binding is not very important for the rest of this talk, so I will omit this. And for the second item two, uh, this is a significant restriction of V because uh, for proving the knowledge property, we have to consider a malicious verifier uh, that sometimes aborts. And so the main technical difficulty is to deal with such a verifier that sometimes aborts. Uh, to deal with such a uh, malicious verifier that sometimes aborts, uh, we first rely on the simplifying trick introduced by Bitansky and Shimeli. The idea is to guess uh, whether V aborts or not. So suppose that we have two simulators that work conditioned on uh, V aborts and doesn't abort, respectively. 
and uh, then by randomly running either of these two, two simulators, we get a simulator that works with probability one half uh, because the probability that the guess is correct is uh, one half. And uh, by the watchless rewinding lemma, uh, such a simulator that works with probability one half can be com converted into a full fledged simulator that always succeeds. By using this trick, uh, our task is reduced to constructing two simulators for aborting and non-aborting cases separately. Uh, first, uh, let's consider the aborting case. So in the aborting case, uh, actually the simulation is very easy uh, because uh, when verifier aborts, the prover uh, doesn't need to uh, send the final message Z. Uh, in that case, the simulator only has to simulate A, uh, which is the first message of the Sigma protocol. And the first message of the Sigma protocol can be simulated without using witness. And so this case is very easy. So why is the non-trivial is the non-aborting case. So in the non-aborting case, the verifier doesn't abort, so prover has to send uh, Z, which means that simulator also has to simulate Z. So, and, and for simulating Z, uh, simulator has to somehow extract E, but in the extraction, it, ha it should not collapse the verified state too much. So this is a difficulty, and we will explain, I will explain how to resolve this difficulty. So for explaining our idea, uh, let's first consider the following toy example. So, uh, suppose that verif verifier the internal state after sending commitment is psi, which is the sum of two orthogonal states, psi a and psi n a. And suppose that verifier uh, performs some projection, perform projection to psi a, and if the projection succeeds, it aborts, and otherwise doesn't abort. And uh, let's think about what happens if we try to extract E from this verifier. So the simulator first runs uh, the ver verifier until it sends ER, uh, assuming that it doesn't abort. Then the verifier's internal state uh, collapses to psi and A. And at this point, uh, this state is different from the original state psi, and we don't know how to go back to the original state. So one may think that the simulation gets stuck at this point. However, our key observation is that uh, such a collapsing also happens in the real execution in the non-aborting case. Uh, therefore, uh, this collapsing doesn't matter for simulation of non-aborting case. Because recall that we are now constructing a simulator that is only required to work in the non-aborting case. So this collapsing is actually fine for that simulator. So this is our very uh, key observation. So for generalizing the idea to the general case, uh, we rely on Jordan's lemma, uh, which is a commonly used lemma in quantum uh, information theory. So this lemma gives us a decomposition uh, of verified internal space into two orthogonal subspaces that satisfy the following. Uh, let's uh, denote the first subspace uh, component by psi smaller than epsilon, and the second subspace component by psi larger than or equal to epsilon. And the meaning of this notation is the following. Uh, if verifier only has the first subspace component, then it doesn't abort with probability smaller than epsilon. And if uh, it only has the second subspace component, then it doesn't abort with probability larger than or equal to epsilon. And moreover, uh, these states in the different subspaces do not interfere with each other. And the lemma especially ensures that if verifier internal state only has the second subspace component, then that remains in the subspace uh, even if we apply arbitrary number of rewinding of the verifier. Uh, based on this observation, uh, we can extract 
e uh, with overwhelming probability by order of epsilon inverse times rewinding uh, if a verified internal state only has a second subspace component. And moreover, uh, such a almost deterministic quantum computation uh, can be done almost without collapsing the internal state in general. Uh, therefore, if a verifier only has the second subspace component, then we can extract E without, uh, almost without collapsing uh, the state. However, in general, uh, verifier also has a first subspace component, and this state may collapse in an unexpected way. However, our observation is that uh, this doesn't matter because this state uh, almost vanishes in the real execution conditioned on no aborting, uh, similarly to the, the, our previous toy example. And if we can set epsilon to be negligible, then we would be able to prove the standard zero knowledge. However, because uh, our refining procedure uh, needs order of epsilon inverse times refining, so we can only set epsilon to be inverse polynomial, uh, though we can set that to be arbitrary small inverse polynomial. And this is why we can only achieve epsilon zero knowledge rather than uh, the standard zero knowledge. So this is a summary of uh, how to construct our simulator. So first we construct two simulators uh, that works in the aborting case and the non-aborting case respectively. And the aborting case simulator is trivial, and the non-aborting case simulator is constructed by the combination of Jordan's lemma and cryptographic techniques, such as collapse binding commitment. And based on the Bitansky and Shimeli trick, uh, we combine these two simulators to obtain a uh, simulator with success probability one, one half. And finally, we rely on Waters' uh, rewinding lemma uh, to uh, convert this into full fledged simulator. And, and as I mentioned, the non aborting case simulator has epsilon simulation error, and this is inherited to this and also this. And this is why our final simulator. Uh, only achieve epsilon zero knowledge uh, simulation. This is a summary of this work. Uh, we gave uh, two constructions of black box epsilon zero knowledge protocols. And the first construction is proofs uh, based on collapsing hash function. And the second construction is argument based on one function. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention.